our God is powerful. That's why he's giving you a powerful declaration. And the Bible says in Jacob 5.16, the insistent prayer of a righteous person is powerfully effective. Mm. That's why we want to pray to, for each other. We want to pray to God. We want to pray for each other. Because we have a powerful thing given by God. The prayer changes things. You probably, many of you see the signs in this land of America when it says prayer changes things. Yeah, it's true because it's a God's word. If you pray, and, and you can change, you can change a lot. That's why we want to pray for each other. Thank you, Sister Catherine, again. Thank you, Pastor Joshua. I, I will invite you again for our Sunday preaching. And again, for those who want to open your Bible, we'll continue uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verses 1, 10. And today we'll be talking about Saul, the chosen one. Pastor Joshua. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Brother Arthur, uh, uh, Brother Arthur for a wonderful scripture reading, and Sister Catherine for a powerful prayer. And we are so glad to see all of you once again. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah, yeah. we are always be glad in the house of the Lord. And we thank God that God never fails us. He is always faithful, and He is always there for our life. And He is always there to listen to every prayer of us. And He is more than be kind enough to even answer our prayer. And that is the God that you and I worship. Hallelujah. And once again, we'd like to welcome all of you to Global Mission Vision Fellowship. Uh, and we are here on every Friday night, Saturday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 11 a.m. So just come at 8461 Garden Grove Universe, Garden Grove City, California. You will be blessed for sure. And let's come and serve together, not only to worship God, but serve together so that we are going to see the vision Phoenix said will come to pass. The vision that said there will be an increase of 20% of the population in our village, counties, cities, provinces, and nation to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In other words, we are praying for a great, great revival to happen once again. And aren't you glad that God used the very intimidate people like us yeah. in other, and not even not advocate. But yet God used us in order to carry out those visions. And today we continue with part number two about Saul, the chosen one. And let us open once again in the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 9. And I'm going to give you a recap of what we have been sharing in the last Sunday services. So we see from this chapter, chapter 9, there will be a lot of characteristics of Saul. And these characteristics will also tell us about the servant of God. As a man and a woman who serve God, as a people who really follow God. And last week we were talking about Saul and his family background. And we knew and we knew from this context that Saul must come from a wealthy family. The fact that he has his own servants then will tell us that his family should be a standing family. And even the Bible also confirmed that. He was the son of Kish and a man of standing. And not only that, he was also a warrior and he was so handsome. And I love to see that the people would say, Oh, your son are, your, your son are so handsome, your daughter are so handsome. We are glad to hear that. And I'm sure that for Saul and his family, they should be very proud because Saul was the most handsome man in his country. Not only in his hometown. And more than that, he is a head taller than anyone else. And I have shared to you that God didn't choose Saul because of his appearance. But because of greater character that God already built in his life since he was a childhood 
until he become a grown man. And we have seen and learned together that Saul was an obedient child. And for us, we have two applications here like I shared last week. That not only for our Heavenly Father that you and I need to obey Him, but we also need to obey our worldly Father here. And we need to listen to the advice, many good advice, and do not be so proud that we said that we know everything and we don't want to listen to anyone else. But there would be a lot of rich experience that our parents who have went through many things that we have ne never experienced before. They knew or they know the ropes and they can share their experience as, especially for those who have the experience with God. They have all the wisdom that the Lord has given to him and her in order to give us the great and the powerful instruction. And we also being remind ourselves that Samuel also said one of the things later on, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Our God loved the obedience more than any burnt offerings or any sacrifices. And we have many scriptures that the Bible also reminds you and I that obedience is a good character for every one of us. But that was the lesson last week. So I just read in Psalm chapter 51 verse 16 to remind you alone. For you will not delight in sacrifice or I will give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. But God is pleased with our obedience. And so let us learn that lesson of obedience and apply in our relationship at home as a children. So that we, we can also show respect and love for our parents. But at the same time that I shared to you last week that there are many things that God are calling us to be obedient. Maybe you are facing with a broken relationship at home and you said, I want a divorce. But God is speaking to you, no, you have to stay there. Be patient. And maybe that God is calling you to give a certain amount of money to someone who is in need and you struggle with that but God needs that obedience or maybe God telling you that you need to repent of something and you and I need to be obedient to the commands or the word of God Amen. maybe God also calling you into a new ministry and you said Lord I'm so busy I don't have the time and I cannot I don't have that guts in order to take another step of faith. But let us learn to be obedient. And the second lesson that we learned from Saul, and I spent a lot of time on this one, is he was the persistent person. And when we talk about persistency, does that mean that we just sit there and do nothing, right? Persistency also needs a lot of patience and also needs a lot of action. And I share many stories related to this one. So let us also learn to become the persistent person. And I thank you for all of you here. Even though we have five people, six people, seven people, actually we have a perfect number here, right? With Master, we have seven people. We have a perfect number to start here. And it seems that sometimes that the church has not grown yet. But I thank God for all of your persistency. And you know, and you believe in the promises of God. And there will be a day that you are going to see a great breakthrough. And when we look back, and just like I look back, when I was obeying God and begin to start with the ministry, with the campus ministry at that time, we have only four people at that time. Only four people at that time. My brother, my sister and my girlfriend <laughs> at that time. But then in the persecuted Christian, in a positive country, you know that whenever you talk about, you touch anything about education or the university student, the government would not like it. They were persecuted because they know that the students are always 
the medians, or even the agent of change in the country. And that's why in the socialist country or the country that they persecute Christians, they do not want us to reach out to the university students. And yes, we have been very faithful and consistent. We go to dorm, we go to the park, and we invite them to go for sports and many concerts and many activities in order to reach them now. And a lot of persecution as well. But the ministry keep on growing and growing. And until 1998, when we start in 1994, and until 1998, we have a gathering of 1,500 university students and young people. The first event ever in that country to have a large gathering of the young people like that. And then, you know, the persecution took place. Strong persecution took place. But we thank God. God is always faithful. When you and I continue to be persistent and trusting in God, but we have to keep on to do the things that God already put into your heart. Many of us are very persistent but do nothing. And that's why we cannot see a breakthrough. And I'm looking for that to the days. And every ministry that we have been doing, and even the crusade, when I started with the evangelistic meeting, in a small group of 15 people, and then 15 people, and then God began to bring us out in that strongly persecuted country. And yes, we begin to do the evangelistic event on the street. And then we go into the factory from a small group of people. Now we have 100, 200, 500, and even 2,000 people in that persecuted country. And you, you ask, how is it possible? And I, my answer for you is that everything is possible for God. Amen. And when you consistently sow the seed, then there will be a day that seed will begin to grow into a plant, into a tree, bear fruits, and that's why we can harvest it. Amen. And then after that, God begin to move us into the crusade and to have thousands of people, 50,000 of people, until I was being deported. So, I learned that lesson, and I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid that only a few of people to start with. But then, we see, whenever we look back, we can only praise the Lord, and we know that, God, you are the one who did this, not us. We are just a very small instrument of God, just a gender of God. But let us continue to learn that lesson are persistent. And of course, I said that it takes a lot of patience and prayer. It takes a lot of waiting and wailing, even, right? Do you like it? Waiting and wailing? <laughs> we don't like it. It takes a lot of self control and sadness, even. It takes a lot of struggle and strength. Amen. But I want you to know that it's worth it. Yeah. It's always worth it. It's worth more than anything else. And that's why you see that I still survive and I'm still smiling. I'm still happy to serve God. If not, I will already disappear somewhere, right? And you will never see me. And we learn also the fact that Saul was a very caring person. So let us learn to care for one another, to help one another, to think on the, uh, in the shoes of other people. And I'm glad in our church, we are very kind people. Hallelujah. Somebody will say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I look at you, very caring people. Amen. Even the people that we think the society already just, they just look at this, you know, well, not, I mean, they don't even want to talk or they don't even come to come close to those people. And yes, God give us that caring heart. And because of that caring heart, that the people will begin to see godly character in our life. And more than that, they see our God is a caring God. And that's why they want to come back to God. Last week, I was not able to finish number four because I talk too much, right? You know, that I, I'm very talkative. Now, let us go to the next one is about the God-fearing man. And we see that when the servant gives the advice to 
uh, to Saul. Look in this town. There is a man of God. He is highly respected and everything he say comes true. Let go there. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. And in this point that we are going to learn, the two points together, is that he also respects the servant of God. But more than that, he wants to listen to the voice of God for the direction that he's going to take. And only the people who really fear God, love God, worship God, Amen. will be able to pray just like so. That we are going to look for the will of God. For the revelation of God, according to Jamie Wilson, a God-fearing person is someone who reverences and honors God. Okay? A God-fearing person is someone who reverences and honors God, living in obedience to His command. Once again, we see the, the obedience. And the Bible contains verses that describe the qualities of a God-fearing man or, or woman. Emphasizing wisdom, humility, and a heart that seek after God. David was known as a man who is after God's heart. The one who revered God, worship God, love God, is the one who is after the heart of God. And of course, for this topic alone, we can talk about many, many weeks and even then. But let us just remind ourselves that are we the person or the people who are sick after the heart of God, the will of God, the way of God, the command of God, the decrees of God, the status of God? Are we the, way, the one who is willing to say, yes, sir, whenever you speak, God, I'm willing to say yes. Yes, sir. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult. When we are in church, everybody will say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Amen. But when we are going to face with the situation, when it requires the sacrifices, yes. then at that time, we are going to see that if we really revere God or not. In those moments, when we have to face with the decision, between job and God. And I remember one of my church members who was a taxi driver in those days. Today we can call it an Uber, right? A driver. In those days we call him a taxi driver. And the boss was so upset with him because the boss said, on Sunday, it's a good business. And I told you not to stop and now I have to give you a decision you choose your work or you choose going to church on Sunday he loves God and he talked to his boss that on Sunday I'm not going to work I want to worship God Amen. Amen. and if he has to work for some urgent that he has to go to worship first and we have been challenged and encourage many church members to do the same thing. Put God first. Amen. And you know that in that country, it's because it's now, it was developing at that time, a lot of factory that they need the workers and a lot of production needs to be produced, right? So they usually pay a lot higher on Sunday and the weekend so that more people to work and they can produce a lot of products and to export to many countries of the world, actually not. So, it's very challenging for many Christians because they have to choose the job of God. But I thank God when this brother came to me and said, Pastor, can I just come on Friday night or during on Wednesday? In those days, we have every night actually. We have the service almost every night so they can come anytime. He said, you pray and when you honor God, God is going to bless you abundantly. Amen. And then when the boss talked to him and said, like that. And he said, boss, give me a few days to pray. So the boss was very happy because he thought that, okay, maybe this one is already hesitant. And after a few days, he coming back and he said, boss, thank you so much. You're very kind to me. But my God is more important. Amen. Amen. So this Sunday, I'm going to church. 
whether you give me the job or not, I'm going to church first. Amen. And you know that when he speak that, and God begin to bring that conviction into the boss, the life of the boss. And he saw that conviction, and then he said, I really salute you. Because they have seen also all the Christians dare not publicly to declare that they choose God. And the God-fearing people will begin to let other people to know God in our relationship, in our dealing with other people, in our talking with other people, in our even very secret places that the people even know that what we do is pleasing God. And you know what? These people that God bless them even abundantly. And one of the reasons why that they are also being faithful and they always give the testimony and said it's very, very strange that usually Tuesday, Wednesday, the business is not very good, right? But God always make up for them more than enough so that Sunday they can just rest and worship God. Amen. When other friends of His the non-believer, they always say, oh, I have not many yesterday. I didn't have many customers today. And yet he was busy during the week so that on Sunday, God saved that day for him because he made the decision to honor God. Amen. And I don't know how many of you are struggling. And I see so many people are struggling over here. And they dare not that take that both step of faith in order to talk to other people and you know that when you talk to your boss God is going to convince them and they Amen. will appreciate you and even Amen. respect you even more just like that boss respect the taxi driver church member and more than that they see the blessing of God upon his life Psalm chapter 112 verse 1 said, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord and who finds great delight in his commands. Psalm chapter 1 will also tell us, Blessed all of the people who walk in righteousness of God. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 2 said, Whoever walks up in uprightness fears the Lord, but he who is devious in his way despises him. So when you begin to walk in uprightness, in integrity, when you begin to do the thing according to the ways of God, then you glorify Him. If not, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 2 said, We des despise Him. We even defy Him if we don't walk in righteousness and integrity. If we don't walk in fear in God, then we are going to fear men. And when you fear men, you are going to follow all the ways of men. And it leads to evil and destruction. And I was very surprised. You know that I talked with Brother Mike many times a week. But especially on Sunday, he always has the temptation. They always came to him and said, you just follow us, follow us to do evils and earn a lot of money and enjoy your life. But I want to say, to thank God yeah. that our brother always said, no. Yeah. no. God already gave us from Monday to Friday, even Saturday to work, and that would be enough. And Monday, it is for God. Thank you. But it's not an easy decision for you and I to make in that situation. So let us continue to honor God in all of our way. And Proverbs chapter 22 verse 14 said, The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is... Oh, I like this one. And I want you to write it down. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. And I can share my testimony here. Many of you today see that I look better, right? Oh, I'm very kind. But that was not me before. I was just, also many people, just like from my here, also joined the gang school. Also drinking, smoking, and also gambling. 
And I just, when I think back, if God didn't save my life, then I may also enter into prison. And even the relative are not really happy to welcome me. And I'm sorry. You know why? Because they worry that their thing will be stolen. Because of my gambling habit. Can you just imagine that? And I thank God, God protected me. I have not entered into drug here. But if I continue to walk into that way, for sure, I will be also become a drug addict. The convicted or even the inmate or the prisoner very soon. But when I dedicate my life for the Lord, today, whenever I go back, even my friends before, they always said, oh, we see a big difference in your life. My relative today always want to invite me to come to their house and begin to pray for the blessing and give the, the word of wisdom and the godly solution for them. In the past, when I come to their house, they will look like this. Okay? <laughs> you know it. But now, they give me a feast of celebration. They will invite me to eat. Why? Because the reward for humility in the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Amen. Not only life in this world, but it's also the everlasting life. But many times, we are short-sighted and we didn't see that. We only want to see something temporarily, something that we can receive right now. Oh, I get the money right now. I'm happy. Or I get the job right now. I'm happy. Even though we know that those jobs or those corruption or those relationships are not pleasing God. And then, if it's not going to lead us into honor, where does it lead us? Into shame. And that's why many people end their life in prison. If it's not going to lead us into life, then it's going to lead us into destruction. And the worst destruction of our life is to die in the lake of hell forever. But you and I will have the life and the everlasting life. The fear of the Lord, Psalm chapter 19 verse 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life and whoever has it rest satisfied and he will not be visited by harm. And this morning, Brother Mike once again also share his story. That in the past, and he shared many times also, he said in the past, he had money, but always worry. Always worry. He has the money, and then he wastes it in the bar, in the KTV, in the club, yes. and destroying his own health because of drugs that he used. Yes. And even today, he said, I don't have, it seems that I don't have much, but I'm happy. I have the peace of mind and he will not be visited by harm. He is visited by many temptations, by the evil people, and just like us. But God is a way who has always protected us. The in the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children will have a refuge. I don't have a lot of time in order to tell you about the reward or the advantages or the blessing of for those for fear of the Lord. Amen. But I thank God, today, our children in the same way, when they, we bring them up in the ways of the Lord, then we are going to see that they might not be follow the ways of the world. And we have to be very careful to keep watch and give them the guidance so that they cannot be led astray by the evil and wicked people. And I'm very proud for my son. Many people, just some students, and many I have seen that the children of many other people, even though they just live only very, not a long distance, only two hours away. Oh, I cannot go back to church because I'm there in school. I'm busy this and busy that. And I'm very proud to stand here and thank God for my son. He took seven hours back and then another six hours back to school. From school back here, seven hours last week, this week. And then usually it will take about six hours to come back and then go back. Twelve hours a week. Tired. He could enjoy. And especially when I, 
I asked him about the food. One of the things that we always worry about the food for our children, right? right? But in his school, every day he had buffet. Buffet. It's good. Good food. Actually, when he go back home, the food at home may not be as good as that place. They have blend, plenty. We prepare a lot of things and now I have to take back everything because he doesn't need anything. But yet, his heart is still willing. And one of the things that I really thank God, he talked to my wife, his mother, that he feel very pitiful for me if I'm alone. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, we thank God that he has that caring heart. Yeah. And I pray that as we raise up our children according to the way of the Lord, to become the fearing man and woman of God, they will have that godly character. Not only in their life be blessed, but they also become a blessing to many other people. Let me just move on to the next one because there are so many scripture talking about the God fearing man. But to sum up with the God fearing man is the one who always follow the heart of God, the will of God, like I said, the decrees of God, the word of God, the commandments of God, the teaching of the Lord, the status of the Lord, the heart of God. And in order to do so, we must know the word of God. And, sec and the next one, the fifth one that we learned from Saul is the generosity. Saul was also a generous man. Later on, life, later on in life, he might be different. But now, we know that Saul said to his servant, If we go, what can we give to the man? The food in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? You see, he wanted to go to see Samuel. He wanted to go to the temple of the Lord. And now, after many days of traveling, he had no more money and food. And that's why he feel shame to go to the house of, Lord, of the Lord and the servant of the Lord without anything. And we tell us his heart for it. We will tell us about the generosity that he has. And we pray that today you and I also pray that we, God will help us so that we also have that generosity. The given heart that comes from the hearts and not from the thrifty calculation. I'm sorry to say, maybe you may, maybe offended some of some of the people may be offended. But we thank God for our church. Very generous. Always blessing other people. The given comes from willingness and not from the face value. The given comes from the passion for God and for the people, not from the obligation. The given comes from the joyful decision and not from the grudging attitudes. The given comes from the abundance of our hearts. I usually say like this. It's not about the size of the church. Okay? Usually it's not about the size of the church. I can also see other big church, but they almost give nothing to the mission field. But for them own self. So it's not about the size of the church, but it's the heart. Okay? It's the heart. And when the heart is open, is ready, is generous, and we can have more to bless other people. Amen. And I thank God during the COVID time, at that time I know that everybody was so difficult. But to our surprise, when we raised money in order to help the many family people in Vietnam, the people gave even 60,000 US dollars. Could you imagine? Only a few people. And yes, God just opened the door for 60,000 US dollars for medicine. And we would be able, was able to have even thousands of family at the time. I would like to challenge all of you and remember that the word of the Lord always remembers us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 and 7. If anyone has material position, possession and see a brother or sister in need but have no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? We have to talk the walk. Hey, Samuel, I'm sorry. We have to walk the talk. <laughs> okay, Hebrews said, chapter 13, verse 6 and 7, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifice, God is pleased. 
Luke chapter 3 verse 38 said, Give and we will be given to you a good measure, press it down, shaken together and running over and will be poured into the, your lap. And for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. May God bless all of you and I as we remind of ourselves. And Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 said, Whoever is kind to the poor, lend to the Lord. And He will reward them for what they have done. And I'm not going to repeat what are the rewards that the Lord already promised. There's so many things here. All I need to challenge you and I is that we need to apply it. We need to practice it. We need to become generous. And we need to learn, just like from Saul, that whenever we come to the presence of the Lord, we come for the kingdom of God, we come into the mission field, don't come empty empty. But we begin to give back for what the Lord has given to us. Remember that the given that we contribute today or in the past already help the preaching or the sharing of the gospel to the nation. And that's why today you go many nations of the world. You see a lot of Christians. Why? Because of our forefather was willing to give so that the gospel should be preached. And then the multitude have come to the Lord Jesus Christ because of those given. The transformation of millions of lives from all walks of life because of those given. The social, material, and spiritual development of those nations and individuals also come because of those given. And that's why do not stop giving. Let me quickly just stand up. I still have more. But I just go quickly. It was also polite as well. Let's just quickly remind ourselves that so is also a polite man. He is also the God's servant respected man. He respected the servant of God. He is also the humble man. In other words, you can also see, and you can also see from this summary, he is an obedient man, a persistent person, a caring person, a God-fearing and man and woman, a generous person, a polite person, a God's servant, respected person, a humble man and woman of God. Let's all of us also apply into our life. Let's invite our brother Arthur once again. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor Joshua. Thank you for the word of God interpretation, your testimonies. You say many good things about us in the beginning, so I'm kind of obligated to say something about you. For those who are watching us first, if you're hesitating, if it's a good place for you to come and worship together with God, for God, I can, I can tell you that Pastor Joshua is a good example. If you if you're cannot decide what church to choose, if you don't have uh, your home church, uh, Jesus said, just check his life because you know them by their fruits well his life is all dedicated to God I can tell you and I can honestly tell you you can follow him you can follow Pastor Joshua because he follows God his principle is Jesus always he always has, has a time for you it's amazing how he finds all the time I always see him rushing back and forth, but yet he always has a time for for all of us. That's amazing. And he is God gifted. You think the uh, gifts are all only speaking tongues, uh, healing, and all the miracles that you can see right away. But the Bible says uh, the gifts from God are also a good preaching, good knowledge, understanding, uh, talking personally with, with others, he has them all, I can tell you. <laughs> so we admire you, Pastor Joshua. We want to give you praise because I know you're super busy working for God. But you, you know that the, the crown is waiting for you at the end. Yes. And that it's going to be given you by the King of the Kings, Lord of the Lords, Jesus Christ, we pray. Just like I mentioned before, the, the prayer can change things and blessing to each other. It's an amazing tool given 
by God. So why don't you just turn to your neighbor, just come to him and put your hand on his shoulder or head and just simply bless him. Just bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Not because we can do anything, because Jesus is giving us the authority, his authority to bless to each other and be blessed by him. So ending this wonderful service, it's a for those who want to offer, it's a it's a time to do so. I'm sure Pastor Joshua will mention about uh, why you transfer as a account number. If you want to do online or simply from your home, you can do so. And uh, thank you for everyone being with us, coming and worshiping and serving God. If you want to serve God, just, just come and join us. Look at Pastor Joshua Life. You can come and personally talk to him. He will find a time for you for sure. He's a God of man. And uh, I want to thank you, Lord, for this day. I want to bless everyone. Thank you for uh, every single moment you're giving us and you, you taking control of, of our lives. Because we want to dedicate our lives to you. We want to sacrifice all the temptations and he, even if there is some, we know that you are going to deal with that. That we're not going to be left alone. That you are a God and yet a living God. Amen. You're a living God that we want to worship, that we want to have a relationship. Thank you, Lord, for all these things, wonderful things happening to us. All the safetyness you provide, all the food you provide wonderful friends and brothers and sisters you put on our way in our life that just like you say Jesus take my yoke because my yoke is easy and we know that we're going through a project but the project needs to end it successfully because you have it in control amen thank you amen and amen Thank you so much, brother, and may God bless all of us. And don't forget, this Thursday, uh, yes, this Thursday, we are going to have a barbecue and potluck again at My Square Park, okay? So you can go there around 4 or 4.30, okay? So we we'll begin at 5 p.m. So we can please just remember and pray together and invite your friends, okay? We have a lot of food. But to share by all of us. So just enjoy together and may God bless us all in Jesus' name and looking forward to see you soon. Amen. Amen. Amen.